Hello, dear people, Jana Kazbekova with Being Yoga Breath and Colors. This is our second video lesson dedicated to breathing techniques great to improve your immunity and strengthen your lungs. Um, first of all, I would like to repeat real quick what we did in the previous video without explanation, without um, any detail. We will just go through the breathing just as a recap of what we did before and also uh, it will help us to maybe work in a little comparison with the breathing that I want us to do today. So um, let's let's go, let's, let's do our Kapalabhati breaths with our hands in our balloon and we're gonna do the powerful exhalations. <laughs> Good. Now let's do real quick all those different variations, modalities. Uh, we will do just four Kapalabhati breaths, so it doesn't take us too long. So four Kapalabhati breaths plus the, uh, the modality. The first modality will be inhaling, holding. And that's it. Four Kapalabhati breaths. Another repetition of the same for Kapalabhati breath. Good. The next modality will be we will be adding the pumping part to our retention inhalation retention, the full lungs retention. Four Kapalabhati breath. Good. Another repetition. Let's remember, we are using the Kegel muscle on each exhalation. Let's remember that. I'll use my hand to remind you. Four Kapalabhati breaths, inhalation, retention, and then exhalation. Let's do that. Very good. I forgot at the moment. <laughs> I was just holding the breath, but yeah, this was with the pumping. The following um, modality of Kapalabhati breath will be four, uh, four uh, breaths and then the full exhalation when we complete it with the, with the mouth and holding and retaining the empty lungs. Let's do that, four Kapalabhati breath. Another repetition. <sighs> Good. And the last modality, we will be pumping on the empty lungs retention. Four Kapalabhati breath. And the last repetition of this last modality, again, four Kapala Bhati breaths. Good. 
You can pause the video anytime to take a little break or to extend your personal practice. And I will move on. So today, we are going to work on the fire breathing. Again, it's easier name to remember, but you don't have to worry about that, uh, about the name, but about the way, uh, well, occupy yourself on the way uh, how you're going to perform this breathing. The fire breath does not have any of the, of the parts of the breathing stronger than another part, as it was in our previous practice, when the exhalation was stronger and the inhalation was more natural. In fire breathing, there is exactly the same impact between the inhalation and exhalation. That means that not only the sound is the same, but also the effort is the same, the contraction of the muscles is the same, and most importantly, the amount of, ox the, the amount of air uh, that comes in and goes out, comes in and goes out, is exactly the same. Um, this breathing, the fire breathing, usually is not deep and it's not very slow, um, mainly because it's just easier to do this ta 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 in, out, in, out, in, out. It's just easier to do it in a little faster uh, tempo. But uh, we're going to start slower and remember that you choose your own pace for the practice. So um, feel free to decide if you go with my pace or you choose your own. The only thing is you can go as fast as you probably eventually are able to go. But uh, as long as your inhales and exhales are coordinated with the movement of your stomach. So the, the logic, the dynamic on the pattern of the movement or the coordination of the breathing with the movement is absolutely the same. I would say pretty much in all breathing exercises that we're going to do in the series. But uh, not, let's not go too much ahead and let's just concentrate in the fire breathing. So let's remember that this is your balloon and this balloon now is going to move again inhale exhale so you expand contract inhale exhale and um, it will be exact same um, effort impact amount of air uh, volume and so on and so forth so let me show you what i have in mind remember that your hands don't have to go to the stomach but uh, it's just for guidance so this is how the fire breathing uh, should kind of sound and look. Okay, this was a little faster breathing. You can do it slower. Or you can do it faster if you're already familiar or if you uh, already practiced a lot and you get that coordination man mastered so you can explore into the faster pace. Okay, so this was like showing off a little bit for you so you understand a little bit what range uh, you can uh, choose for your breathing. I just want to bring the Kapalabhati and the lion breathing, just a few short, uh, like a little short sample of each of them together. I mean, one after another, so you see the difference. So the Kapalabhati, fire breathing, right? So the sound of your breathing is also uh, different in the fire breathing. You sound on both parts, on the inhale and on the exhale. Uh, I like to compare this to the sound of polishing the shoes kind of sound. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but in the country where I come from, uh, it's, it was very common. I grew up seeing those uh, shoe... Um, cleaners, polishers, who were using cloth of uh, fabric and they were polishing the shoe exactly the same movement. It was like this, e -e 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 -e. <laughs> maybe a little funny, but that was exactly the rhythm. And I want us to apply that rhythm to your fire breathing. So don't worry about the speed. 
just keep in mind, in the fire breathing, in this one that we are practicing in this lesson, your inhalations and exhalations are equally strong, equally soundful, and they manage equal same amount of volume of air, in, out, in, out. So the inhalation is not weaker than exhalation and the other way around. So let's go, let's start from the, from the slower pace maybe, just to catch. The slower pace is just for you to coordinate, to find that pattern, that, that coordination again between your inhale, exhale, and the expansion and contraction of your stomach, because it's important. I would say that for the fire breathing, now that you just start practicing it, you don't worry at all about your Kegel muscle, which we worked on or which we used in our previous lesson. Now, forget about it. Uh, over the time of your practice, when you start mastering, when you start getting more comfortable, familiar and comfortable with the fire breathing, you may start engaging your, your um, Kegel muscle. But for now, since you are just beginning, don't you worry about that. Let's begin with a fire breathing or the shoe polishing movement on a slower pace. Let's remember, in this particular occasion, we are doing it through the um, nose, everything, inhale and exhale. So let's do that. I think I was not that slow this time. <laughs> Anyways, remember, you can slow uh, down your pace, you can pause the video, uh, catch your breath because it's normal at the beginning to feel like you are getting out of breath or you are getting a little hyperventilated. And that means that you are not managing exact amount of volume of air. So that's what it means. That's why the emphasis, very strong emphasis here is on really making sure to go within and observe your breathing from within, listening to it, feeling it, moving through it, to make, to ensure that you are exhaling exact same amount of air that you inhale. And that means also that your inhalation is really not profound. So I would say, uh, this is how I kind of perceive it myself, and this is how I usually teach it in the, my in-person classes, that fire breathing is probably on the shallower side. So it's not as profound, it's not as deep. It's more shallow, but it's rhythmic. You are literally creating that exchange of air in your, in your, in your blood, in your lungs and in your blood at a faster pace. So this breathing is known even more as a blood chemistry um, changer, blood oxygenator, very powerful. I would say faster even than Kapalabhati breath. So let's come here again. I will uh, focus on doing this practice with you slower, guys. So again, um, fire breathing on a slower pace. Okay. So um, on one hand, it's, it's, it's like a little easier because you don't have to remember what is stronger, what is weaker, whether it's in your inhale or in your exhale. But on the other hand, when you put equal amount of effort in both parts of the breathing, you need to use your muscles twice as more. You need to use your muscles as much as you use them to inhale, the same uh, powerfully you use them to exhale. So I like to give all those details to try to find, so you can try to find which explanation or which approach or which wording makes more sense to you. So in between of the, of the attempts and of the repetitions, I will maybe add yet another uh, way to, to look at it and to explain it. Um, okay, let's practice again since we are in the practical lesson, not theoretical lesson. Again, in a slower pace, um, fire breathing, same effortful, 
same sound full, same volume of air on a shallower, faster um, pace. Very good. Inhale deep and let go. Good. Very good. So again, it's a exercise of co for coordination. We are coordinating the breathing part with the muscular movement part. So this is a brain-body coordination exercise, which helps us to focus our attention on that very thing, on your breathing. It's really powerful way or really effective and, and powerful and functional way to switch the focus of your attention from whatever is in your mind, whether it is bugging you or distracting you or just occupies you, you know, be, keeps you busy, to yourself, to your body. It's really important that we really, we find time um, for ourselves. We find that uh, we set that pure intention to dedicate a certain amount of time a day for us, something that does good to us. It may be anything, but in this case, I'm sharing breathing with you because the, the, um, the, the goal for this is to strengthen your immunity in your lungs. Now, let's go to the maybe a little faster pace, okay? So again, hands probably on your, on your balloon. And let's go and explore the faster pace for the fire breathing. Inhale deep. And let go. Great. Again, reminding you that you can stay with the previous pace. If this one is a little too overwhelming to you, feel free to do so. Again, feel free to pause the video for your personal practice or rest. Again, uh, you can practice this breathing, whether standing like I am right now, or sitting on the chair with the feet uh, on the floor, legs uncrossed, or sitting on the yoga mat or cushion, crossing your legs uh, and both uh, well, actually in all three occasions we want to keep our back extended our back straight and our shoulders as relaxed as possible so we don't do breathings from this pose from the gadget pose right so we are aligning our spine better okay so uh let's do again let's do again the repetition of this um fire breathing at this i would say moderate pace I really want to go through different speeds and different modalities also so you can see the, the range of um, creativity that you can apply uh, as, as soon as you know the basis. You know the basis, you master the basis, which is in this case the fire breathing. Uh, it's another basic type of breathing. When you know it, you can play with it. Okay, so let's go to the moderate pace and um, let's begin. <laughs> Inhale deep and let go. Good. Now that we are playing with the different paces, with different tempos, I invite you to focus your attention and maybe to observe, because you, you probably naturally do it, that um, the, the slower your fire breathing, the deeper it is, the more air you move in and out. And also, it makes it a little bit more tiring and a little bit more prone to, you know, lightheadedness kind of feel. The more we speed up, the more we accelerate the speed of this practice, the, breathing become, the breathings become shorter. 
the amount of air is less, but the speed is more. So it's a little different effect. The breathing becomes more kind of micro uh, breath, but it gets deeper because you create a vibration with the speed of your movement. Uh, let me show, well, I already showed it to you a few minutes ago. Let's try it. Let's not waste time. Let's try it. The faster, uh, even faster pace of fire breathing um, practice. Okay, so let me see what would be the faster, even faster one. This would be probably like this. Good. So I just gazed at my, at my um, upper chest and the clavicles now. And I want to make uh, like a um, remark here. I don't know if you actually happen to see uh, my abdomen, I hope so, at least the upper part, um, that the movement that you observe here when I do my uh, fire breathings, it is not the movement that is originated by this part. This is the consequence of your abdominal and diaphragmatic movement. And it's powerful enough to influence, you know, to impact this part and make it also, you know, kind of pulsate with your breathing. It's really important that we don't try to recreate this from here because we start to create tension on the shoulders and our neck and this is what it is. And this is the straight way to the hyperventilation and excessive tension on the back of your neck. We do not want that. We want again the power of this breathing begin being, being built from the, uh, from the lower abdomen, from your pelvis, all the way up. Okay, let's, let's get back to practice. Um, let's do the same kind of faster speed. Uh, or remember, you can do your own speed comfortable for you. Here we go. Let's inhale deep again and exhale again. Great. It's really important to finish all uh, each of your practices and each of your uh, repetitions with a good inhale and exhale because a good and deep, uh, profound breathe in and breathe out, breath in and breath out helps you to release. So while you are beginning, when you are beginning in your, uh, in your practice of a breathing technique that was not habitual for you in your daily basis, even if you don't want to, but you still create some kind of tension because, because you're trying so hard to, to, to catch it, to, you know, to recreate it. So always give yourself a little time. You can stop your repetition earlier, let's say, than I do in this case and take a good breath and give yourself a few seconds to kind of loosen up. Let's do the third uh, repetition of that faster um, pace for your fire breath. So this is one uh, modality of fire breathing, and this is the most common one. It's performed through the nose, both inhalation and exhalation. Um, before we proceed to the following one modality, we are still, this class is about fire breathing, so we are not going to explore any new um, breathing techniques yet. But before we proceed to this other modality, I would like to just real, uh, briefly, shortly, to tell you, uh, you see, the, in the first video I was wearing yoga for <laughs> typical yoga kind of uh, clothing. Today I'm wearing girly sweater and girly pants uh, because I was out and about and I was doing my, uh, running my errands. The reason why I'm saying this to you, I'm bringing your attention uh, to you, 
not to really show off, but actually to, to help you realize that you do not need to justify not practicing because you are not uh, having your yoga attire, yoga, yoga clothing on you, or you didn't have your yoga mat. To, to, to practice breathing, in reality, it's not required. You can practice it wearing absolutely everything, anything or nothing, really. Because it's really, really unrelated to any yogic gear yoga gear so uh, that means that no excuses guys every little break in your in your work day in your any day of your life you can always take a little break to practice your breathing one of the moments that i uh, as a practical person I like to use this uh, you know time to practice is when i'm driving this uh, the the, the um, fire breathing is really very appropriate for that uh, as long as you are mastering it already so as long mm, let's say as long as you're comfortable with it already so it doesn't distract you in fact it focuses you more so um you just use the time where you're just sitting to do something else <laughs> especially when you are on the street light uh, waiting for the street light to switch. So that's just the perfect moment for, for the practice. So let's now move on to the next modality. And the next modality is performed through the open mouth and the tongue stuck out. And this is one of those breathing that I uh, referred to yes, uh, in the previous class when I said that there are some techniques that will look silly, strange, funny, or hmm. <laughs> and uh, I like to say that uh, the breathing techniques uh, are not really to perform at the restaurant or in any public place. Do them in the comfort of your, of your uh, room, in the comfort of your home, um, so you feel free and uh, uninhibited. So um, here is the thing, uh, we are going to stick the tongue out. And this is the thing, you need to stick your tongue out forcefully. So this is a really, uh, you put an effort in your tongue movement or in your tongue position. So it's not just barely, uh, it's not like, uh, it's uh, really, uh. So you really want that extension. It's very expressive and it's really creating stimulation to the double decker, if that's what uh, your concern is. It, um, what, the reason why I like it, actually it's not, uh, first of all, the, the aesthetical purpose of it. Although most of us, uh, especially girls, are uh, you know, worrying about that aesthetic part. But the reason, the, the, the part which is behind the aesthetic is that you're tightening your muscles here. When you stick your tongue out, you're tightening the muscles of your, below your chin. And uh, another thing is, as you tighten your muscles, you also stimulate the glands that are, I'm salivating, <laughs> the glands that are uh, there, um, behind, under your tongue and, and uh, above the, the, this muscle, right? And the lymph nodes also. So it's, it's a really much more than aesthetic. It's a lot about health. It's a lot about having this part clean, clean, not externally, but external, uh, internally. And you gain that only when you have the, the um, uh, full, uh, domain or how you say that full control of those muscles I forgot the word um, command <laughs> full command full full control of those muscles so let's first be uh, without the breathing let's first just play sticking the tongue out and putting it back in who would think that there would be an online class teaching you how to stick your tongue out. <laughs> but honestly, uh, working with seniors, I see this a lot, that most or some of them, or most of them, depending on their mental health condition, are not able or they don't have strength to push the tongue out anymore. It's really, I mean, your, your swallowing mechanism also in part depends on that. Uh. You see, you, you, you contract, you are tightening every muscle here and your neck becomes also strong and, and reinforced. So let's play.
One more. Good. As funny as it is, I invite you to do at least your first practices of this in front of the mirror. Why? Because you want to make sure, regardless of your age, you want to make sure that when you stick the tongue out, pointing it down, it is pretty much in the middle. So it doesn't kind of pull anywhere to the side. Don't panic if it is. It just tells you that, okay, you need to stimulate and balance it back because this a little bit speaks about the brain hemisphere's balance. So, um, you know, as anything, the earlier we start working on certain things, the, the faster we, we balance our body. So um, let's uh, get to the actual breathing part. I think uh, that sticking the tongue out is the easiest thing that you could probably uh, master faster and, and uh, practice on your own. Um, stick your tongue out to your kids. They will love it. Okay, so um, now we're going to stick the tongue out. And we will try to do that fire breathing through the mouth. And this is how it's going to look. And come back. The beauty of this, and I see as a teacher, I see it as a beauty. It might actually not seem like beauty to some of you guys is that when you start doing this breathing like this through the mouth and through the you know the, the sticking the tongue out you probably start feeling like a little weird flavor a taste in your mouth uh, that is just a proof yet another proof of uh, what i spoke about in the last video that your body produces toxins every single second so we want it or not, that's how it is. And the more you emphasis you put in your conscious breathing, the more you help your body to detoxify in a natural way. Okay, let's, uh, let's do this again. Sticking the tongue out with a slower pace. Very good. Coming back. Remember, take a deep breath in and exhale. Good, very good. Let's play with a little faster pace. Let's do a medium speed, or maybe the one that I did now seemed a little faster for some of you guys. So, like I said, this is very relative. The speed is completely up to your body. And I repeat that, it's up to your body, not up to your fearful, super analytical mind. Because when we start doing something new, uh, in terms of, let's say, a new breathing practice and new breathing technique, uh, there is a high probability that the mind starts questioning. What the heck is this? What am I doing? Is it good for me? Oh, I'm starting to feel a little weird. It's totally normal. Having those questions inside your head, those comments, is completely normal. So don't run away from it. Just embrace it. This is a phase of your practice which implies questioning. But the more you do that, the more comfortable you get with that. All those inquiries, all those maybe worries, they just fade away because you become familiar. It's not a wow, a new, a weird thing for you anymore. Okay, too much blah, blah. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted you to, you know, calm down to settle. Now let's, um, let's do the faster pace. So I'll have my hands on the, on the balloon. This balloon. Uh, stick your tongue out and find your faster pace. Inhale deep through the nose and exhale. Very good. Now I invite you to choose the speed that is more comfortable for you because within this uh, 
open mouth fire breathing. I want to play a little bit with the position of our head, just so you don't get bored. <laughs> but uh, honestly, you can apply these breathings to any pose. Again, this is probably not one of those breathings that I would suggest you to do by when you are waiting for the street light, <laughs> right? But um, but still, in the comfort of your home, you still can, can find those different creative applications to your breathing. It's going to be very basic. So um, the hands wherever you're comfortable. I will just drop my hands this time. And uh, we're going to stick our tongue out, turn your head to one side, and do exactly the same fire breathing as you did looking straight. So one side. Very good. Coming back. Now that you did it on one side, obviously because of the position of the, of the neck and the contraction of these muscles, you felt if your, if your breathing was, you know, powerful enough, you felt that there was something here. You basically were cleaning more this side because you were pulsing more into that side. Now let's turn to another side and do exactly the same. So just your head. You don't turn your body, just your head. And again, inhale and exhale. Very good. I really like this. It, it amazes me. So yes, it really truly amazes me um, how the breathing changes the temperature of our body. So before I started recording this lesson, I was a little chilly. It was a little cold in my room. But uh, as, as the more I was moving on with this breathing practice, explaining to you and practicing myself, the body gains this warms up, it gains that temperature. And the most amazing part is that it doesn't only warm up the part that you think naturally would warm up first because it's the one that you're moving. It actually moves, uh, sorry, warms up all the way to your limbs, to the tips of your fingers, to the tips of your toes. And that yet is yet another proof of how conscious breathing helps you to balance uh, your body at many levels. And temperature level is uh, just one of them. Okay, so we did the side to side. Now we're going to look up, stick your tongue out and do that. Come back, inhale. And exhale. And the last variation will be looking down again, open the mouth, sting your, stick your tongue out powerfully and do that. And then come back. So as you go through all those different positions of your head, uh, add it to the breathing you will feel how differently your muscles respond to that. You will feel different sensations. They are not the same as when your neck is straight and you are looking forward. Here is one type of, you know, muscular work and you will feel it one way. Here is other way because remember that uh, we are somewhat asymmetrical. So you will probably feel it one, one side more, one side less. Here is more about stretching here and compressing here and you are also stick the tongue and you do that. And here's you very profound stimulation for your thyroid gland and all these glands below your tongue. So different modalities, different uh, little uh, specifications and different little um, implications. But uh, if you don't have time, if you don't maybe want to bother <laughs> doing all those variations, you can just do the straight neck and you're good to go. Let's again, I want to remind you that one minute of conscious breathing ensures one hour of enough oxygen intake by your body. Even if after this lesson, you go and walk through the rest of your day doing absolutely normal stuff that you usually do, breathing the normal way that you usually breathe without even remembering of, of this class or remembering of being atten attentive to, my, to your breathing. The fact that you dedicated these um, about 45 or 40 to 45 minutes to your breathing today ensured you 
that enough oxygen intake for the whole day. So uh, I really cordially invite you to practice, uh, strengthen your body, strengthen your muscles, purify your cells, activate your cells, make them more uh, flexible, more elastical, um, more freely flowing. So healthier, happier cells mean healthy and happier you. So love yourself, embrace uh, the fact that we do or you do need to dedicate some time to yourself. Uh, a little discipline is never hurting. And honestly, we come to, to this life, all of us looking for happiness. We want to be happy. And uh, in, a part, in part, discipline makes you happy because it makes you healthier. So, practice. This was Fire Breathing with Yana Kazvekova at Being Yoga, Breath and Colors. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.